Welcome to North Metro TV's coverage of Local Decision 2019. I'm Rusty Ray and we're having chats with candidates in various races and that includes the races for the city of Circle Pines. And in this season there are none, there are no races that are opposed. So we have uh, a race for city council, another race for city council, and a race for mayor with just one person running and it's Dave Bartholomew. Hi. Another race, another election. Yep. This will be, uh, let's see, I've been 14 years as mayor, so this is probably my eighth election, I guess. Okay. Every two years. Okay. And you keep coming back. You love being mayor of Circle Pines. <sighs> well, I really do. Um, it's uh, not the four grand a year that it, it uh, pays, <laughs> that, right. that drives it. But, you know, I've worked for a congressman, a couple congressmen. I worked for a governor. Um, I work for the state of Minnesota now as, a, as my day job. And you see a lot of people, a lot of kind of positions of authority. And what you realize is it's really at the city, at the local level, that's where you can really make a big difference. So I love that the best. What is it that this time around or looking forward the next couple of years with a new member on council especially and yeah. all that that may or may not entail, is there an opportunity to take on something or is there something to continue work progress on? Well, you know, that's the thing that's interesting. Every community has its own set of challenges. Some of them you know, you know they're happening, you know they're going to be coming. And of course, sometimes there's things you don't know that are coming and kind of surprise you. But yeah, we've got a lot of things going on. Circle Pines is a little different than, for example, a Blaine or, or a Lionel Lakes that have a lot of room to develop. You know, development brings a lot of new houses, new businesses, new taxes, all kinds of things. Um, Circle Pines is fully built out. So there isn't any, any kind of new section of town to develop. However, there are some places that need some work. And so we've got a whole bunch of things. Uh, First one kind of comes to mind for most of our residents would be a place called the Down Under. Uh -huh. And this was a bar yes. that uh, was closed probably 10 years ago. The building sat there for nine, finally got it torn down um, this last uh, fall. And so, you know, it's a blank piece of property right along Lake Drive. People are asking, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? We were very glad to get it taken down. That took us years. Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to figure that out. We have a great, really model kind of uh, pilot program going on with Golden Lake water quality uh, where we're going to clean the water coming in, clean the water in the lake and that system is pretty innovative and we believe it's funded by the state of Minnesota. We believe that that when it's up and when it's running it could be a model for a lot of lakes that are impaired with too much nitrogen, too much phosphorus, too much weeds. So we think we got a couple of really neat things going on. Speaking of Golden Lake, that group of people that live over there, very organized, very mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. eager to help with this and yeah. talking with the city, talking with the state and making sure that these things happen. But that's got to be good to see that neighborhood yeah. that organized right. and, and wanting to make it a better place for everyone. Because they're right. saying, they're telling us it's not just our neighborhood. We know people that drive in who may live in Lionel Lake, so they yeah. may live in Blaine, that they want to come and enjoy this right. lake. Right. It's a great resource. You know, it's a crown jewel of our park system. Right on the lake, you got the beach, you got volleyball, you got tennis, you got a concession stand. It's really neat. It used to be a county park up until about 12, 15 years ago probably. And uh, the county just wasn't really paying much attention to it. They really wanted to focus on things like Bunker Hills and stuff. And that's totally understandable, kind of bigger regional parks. So then it came back to the city. city cleaned it up a lot. It's great. Um, we're going to get a new fishing pier. The DNR tells us that fishing pier needs to be replaced. That's great. Um, and there's a lot of things that could go on to improve the water quality. Now, some of the stuff, the state grant we got, from the legacy fund, which is that quarter percent sales tax that went on a few years ago. So $500,000 more or less comes back to the city to do this really innovative idea, but it still takes a lot of local mm -hmm. buy-in, takes, takes residents and, and people around. All of Circle Pines drains into, those stormwater drains come into Golden Lake. So it's not just the people on the lake or across the street. It's a lot of people that use that lake and we want to make sure it's clean and, and getting better all the time and stuff. And so it, yeah, it, it needs a little bit of work to get that water quality better, and so we got a plan. City Council, and in particular, remember Dean Goldberg working very hard on the census effort, right, coming up in 2020. Why is that so important for, for people who haven't heard, and I think a lot of people have, but for people who haven't heard, for the city, why is this census so critical? Well, first off, we are so fortunate to have census man right. in our community. <laughs> we're very proud of him. Uh, Dean is doing a great job all across the state, and so that's really great. You know, we're right at the 5,000 person bubble. That's the size of our town. And we, if we go 49 something or whatever, but 5,000 is a mark in state law. If you're up to 5,000 or more, you get state aid for your roads. So it's 175, couple hundred grand a year that goes into our streets and stuff. And it also helps out the school district a lot for their community ed, things like that. So, so there's a lot of pieces. You don't really realize how much a census number 
kind of really makes a difference. So if we slide under that, which we did before, if we slide under that 5,000 and lose some aid, that'd be a drag. We'd either have to cut programs, quit fixing up our roads as much, or raise taxes, which we would you know, prefer not to do. So it's really important everybody counts. You're taking measures to be proactive to get that word out. Yep. Some of the things, though, you're at the mercy of the state or the county, like some of the roads, the county parks, the trails. Yep. Yep. You were talking to us recently about the, the, the process and sort of a failure previously to get funding to continue the Lake Drive right. uh, paved bike trail. Right. And that, that's right. something like that is important for residents. It's important for yep. a lot of reasons. Oh, right? for sure, for sure. You know, you look at a city and you think, well, a couple things. Number one is a lot of times I think when people go driving around, or you don't know where... Blaine starts, Circle Pine starts, where does Lionel Lakes end, where is Lexington? It's all just kind of a, of a, of a mix. It really is the school district, the Centennial School mm -hmm. District, which we're very proud of and we do a lot of work with. And so the challenge gets to be is you need to work with your neighbors. Uh, just today, coming here, I'm trying to get up Highway 65. Well, Tom Ryan, the mayor of Blaine, has been telling me for years, you know, as soon as we get 35W done with this extra lane, we got to get some help on 65. That's not just a Blaine problem. That's our problem, too, in Circle Pines and everybody else. So we share a lot of those things. And, yeah, we do have some projects that really need the county to sign off on them, um, some things that go on that are more regional in nature. And it really is important. The best you can do is have great relations with the county, the state, and with your neighboring communities, if you can have it. Sometimes those things get difficult based on personalities and stuff. you got to try to figure out a way to work through that. Speaking of, there's an opportunity to have a new relationship on a county level. There's a District 6 opening. There's a, yeah. a race for that that we're covering here. What is that opportunity like for the city to... And I know a lot of these candidates, uh, Cindy Hansen, Craig Johnson, and a few others perhaps yeah. have come and spoken to city council. Right. What is that like, that opportunity to build a new relationship? Well, it's really important. We got along great with Rhonda Sivaraja. Her and I got along well. We didn't necessarily see things eye to eye all the time, but we had that ability to build a good working relationship. You know, I looked at running for county commissioner, and I looked long and hard at it. And, and at the end of the day, um, looking at what it does for you know, my job and for all the other things, I thought, you know what, I, I like being mayor. I really do. And so I decided to stay where I'm at. We've got a whole group of people running. But it's important that that person really reflect and help us build a better part of the county. The library is a classic example. We have a beautiful brand new library right in Circle Pines. It's not the Circle Pines Library. It's the Centennial Library. It covers the whole area. So it covers Lionel Lakes and all the people around us. And so it's really important that we work together to keep those amenities. Chamonix Golf Course, another example of we don't know what the status of that might be. But so there's a lot of times there's county-city partnerships that got to happen. And, you know, it's, it just takes relationships. It takes keeping in touch with each other, uh, trying to work the best you can. So in talking with uh, Steve McChesney and Matt Percy uh, for City Council, they say that largely that it's status quo and maintaining, not, you know, just mm -hmm. saying, okay, we're just going to keep going. No, we're going to maintain and, and improve where we can these services. But that does take hard work. Yeah, it does. You know, years ago, one of my council colleagues decided not to run again because the big development at Lake and Lexington, the corner there with townhomes and apartment buildings, that had been done. And he said, you know, I think it's just going to be maintenance mode from now on. And, I, and I'm not really interested in that. So he didn't run again. Well, that was great. But now I look back at it and boy, we've done a lot of work in our parks, in our trails, our street projects. We have Golden Lake project going on. We have to figure out what to do with the down under. We have all these relationships with our police department, our fire departments. And so there's always things going on. So yeah, in some respects, if you look at the big development in Blaine or some big shopping center or something, that looks kind of neat and fun. Um, but you know what? There's a lot of ways you can improve the quality of life for people in your community. And a lot of times that's all about relationships and neighbors and trying to make sure it's safe. Um, there's a lot of folks coming into the community um, and, and they're not necessarily, they may look or sound a little different than the folks that are already there. That's an opportunity. So we have to figure out how to be a welcoming community. This is going to change a lot. If you look down the road, um, great community, great base starting as a cooperative you know, having a unique history, but then you look a little bit farther down the road and you start thinking, boy, there's going to be a lot of change coming. How are we prepared for that? How are people going to be included? We do a lot, do a lot of work with our school district, and one of the questions is, how are these kids that are coming to Golden Lake going to kind of get the, source, the resources they need, get the support they need? And so it's just always exciting. It's like a continuous improvement kind of thing. You can always do more. But we're got, we have taxes to watch, you know, we have to make sure we can do the best with our resources. And that's why sometimes partnering with the state on Golden Lake or some of these other things, that's, that's the way we do more for the more bang for our buck. Okay. Sounds good. Mayor Dave Bartholomew, thank you yeah. very much. You bet. Good to see you again. Thanks a lot for having me. Thanks for doing all this. You got it. You can 
Stay with North Metro TV and NorthMetroTV.com for full coverage of Local Decision 2019. We'll have this conversation online and on our YouTube channel where you can watch this along with the other Circle Pine City uh, conversations and the candidates for Lionel Lakes Mayor, Lionel Lakes Council, Anoka County Board District 6, and the Spring Lake Park School Board elections all this season. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rusty Ray.